sell me this pen? Can you sell me this pen? Hey, Tom Ping, love what you're doing on your channel, buddy. Super congrats, you know, giving your time and energy to nonprofit business channel. Look, man, keep driving that audience. So Tom Ping, look forward to spending some time with you. I know you got the right mindset, so I'd love for you to share some of that from the big V. God bless, be great, to next. So what am I talking about? Sell me this pen. So if you watch this movie called Wolf of Wall Street, you might be familiar with this uh, term because the story is about this guy called Jordan Belford. And at the end of the movie, he was teaching people how to do sales. And what he would do is to ask people to sell him this pen. So this became such a meme that uh, a lot of uh, companies in North America, when they hire salespeople, they use this as a question. Can you sell me this pen? So if you go into a sales interview in North America, oftentimes they will ask you this question. Can you sell me this pen? And now you have to sell this pen, right? And usually what people do is, oh, you know, this pen's great. It, it writes really good, it's beautiful. You know, you can write both sides and, and it's awesome, buy it. That's how usually people would answer that question and that's an automatic fail. It's not the way to sell the pen. So first of all, let me share with you a video clip about Jordan Belford. Um, hello, Mr. Belford. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I have one question and I'm a huge fan of your film. So this just uh, comes quite naturally. Can you please sell me this <laughs> pen? <laughs> you know, no one's ever asked me that before. It's the first time. <laughs> um, so let me, let me tell you what that whole exercise really stands for, right? So the whole sell me this pen narrative is really it's a test that you give to a salesman to see if they really understand what selling is all about. If you ask someone who's not a professional salesman, who doesn't have the right instincts, they'll start actually trying to sell you a pen. This pen is great. This pen writes upside down. It's the best value for its money. This pen will last forever. Buy this pen. Here's the thing. The only one rational thing you could do when someone says, sell me this pen, and that is to start asking them questions. So tell me, how long have you been in the market for a pen? What type of pens have you used in the past? Is it a business or personal? Typically when you buy a pen, what type of money do you spend on one? Do you buy expensive pens? I, you, the, the, the key to selling is to find out, step one, what are your client's needs, values? What pain are they looking to resolve? What, what do they need? And you're looking to fill that need at the most basic level, right? Well, when you just go out and try to sell something, someone, what you're saying is, I don't give a shit about you. I'm just gonna ram this down your throat, right? I want to know what you need. I want to know what you've done in the past. So you ask questions. If I ask someone, hey, so how long have you been in the market for a pen? And they say, oh, I'm not looking for a pen. Great, have a nice day. I don't sell people the things that people aren't looking for. I wouldn't try to sell you a pen if you're not looking to buy a pen. So that's, and if someone said to me, I'd say, wow, this person really knows how to sell. Because the biggest mistake that rookie sales would make is they try to sell to everybody versus weeding out people who are not interested and only selling to those who are. So I ask questions. But not any question, I ask pointed questions to identify what type of pens you've used in the past, how much money you have. Now the pen is like a euphemism for any product, right? By doing that, I can get a good sense of what you're about and then when I'm done asking my questions and I know what I need to know, I'll say, well, based on what you said to me, this pen is a perfect if you let me tell you why. And now I'm actually matching my pen to what you need and I tailor my presentation to fill that need and it's much more elegant. Make sense? Yes, okay, thank great. you. So there it is, Jordan Belfort answering the question how to sell this pen. Let me talk a little bit about Jordan Belfort. Jordan Belfort was uh, somebody that really know how to sell things. And unfortunately, he used his skill for bad things. He was doing some bad things. Eventually, he went to jail for a little while and then he came out and he decided to use his power for good. So now today, he is uh, training people He's training companies uh, about doing better sales, how to be a good salesperson, how to build a great sales team. And right now he's actually quite rich. He's one of the richest people in his field. 
So, and he's one of the top sales coach in the world. There's a few people that I respect. Jordan Belfort is one. I like uh, Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone is in the intro of this video. He gave me his endorsement. That's good. Uh, so these two are pretty good. Uh, outside those two, I think there's nobody else. Like these two are really the best in North America and the world. And in fact, I teach what they teach. I take what they teach and I teach my sales teams. I teach my salespeople in my company. It doesn't mean that they will do what I say because, right? but we use their system. And if you do it right, it works, man. It works really, really well. It makes them very, very rich. Grant Cardone is a billionaire. Jordan Belford, I don't know, but he's extremely rich. So if you haven't watched the movie, Wolf of Wall Street, please watch it, especially if you aspire to be a great salesperson in Vietnam. That is a movie you should not miss because it will teach you so much about how to run a sales team. Wolf of Wall Street, catch it. He was so good at sales, they made a movie about him. Jordan Belfort, check him out. Now, let's go back to the question of how to sell this pen. What did Jeff Belfort say? Jeff Belfort basically gave you a very simple idea. The first thing you should do is to figure out if the person that you're selling to is in the market for a pen. If they're not looking to buy a pen, just forget it, don't waste your time. You only want to sell to people that want to buy your product. You only want to sell to people that have a problem that you can solve. If they don't have a problem, they don't need a pen, and you're trying to sell the pen, then you're wasting your time, right? You want to approach customers, clients that need your solution or your pen. That's the first thing. You got to filter out your prospects. Only talk to the ones that are potential. Only talk to the ones that need your products and services. And that is what separates great salesperson and bad salespeople. The really bad salespeople, they just want to sell, sell, sell. They, they, will, they will sell to anybody. But the smart salespeople, they only sell to the people that have the demand. That's one. And two, what did Jordan Belfort said? Ask a lot of questions. And that's what I teach in my sales training. As a professional salesperson, I see people make this mistake a lot in Vietnam. Even the professional salespeople, they think they're professional. They go meet a big customer and I go with them and they sit there and, and then they sell so hard. They're like, my product is the best. My product can do this. My product can do that. If you buy from us, we will take care of you. You don't have to worry, okay? Uh, we are the best. My dick is so big. Literally, that's what they're doing. They're telling people how big there is their dick. They sell too hard. And I was watching this. I was watching my own salesperson like sell so hard. I'm like, fuck this shit, man. I really just want to grab them and like fucking punch them in the face. Seriously, sales meetings with customer, I go with my salespeople and they're like selling so hard. I just literally tell them to fucking shut up. Can you shut the fuck up? I tell my salespeople and the customer's like, <gasps> The CEO just told the salesperson to shut the fuck up because they're making the biggest mistake in sales. You don't sell so hard because when you're selling so hard, the customer sees it. The customer sees that you're not really on their side. You're just trying to close the deal, get their money. They don't feel that you are on their side. A smart, professional, real salesperson don't have to sell so hard. The smart salesperson ask a lot of questions. So are you in the market for this? What are your problems? Where are you driving sales? You ask a lot of questions. How is your current website doing for you? Do you have a membership program for your customers yet? Do you have a loyalty program? Have you considered using university students to help you drive sales? Have you considered using distributor affiliate programs? You ask these questions and the customer think, oh yeah, we could use that. Oh yeah, we could use that. And now they're thinking, oh, you're here to help us. Now the customer feel that the salesperson is on their side. The salesperson is trying to help them, give them new ideas to drive their business, to drive more revenue, to drive more sales, trying to help them solve whatever problem they have. And once they understand that the product can really solve their problems, easy. If I sell, I ask a lot of questions. After I ask a lot of questions and tell them what our product can do, the customer always say this to me. How come I don't know about your company before? 
because they're in shock. Whoa, you can do all that? How come I don't know? And then the next question they ask me is this, how much is it? And I give them a price. I say, well, it's this. And they'll say, why is it so cheap? And then you close the deal. You give them a contract, you close the deal. That's how you should do a sales call, sales meeting, by asking a lot of questions. Understand customer's pain point. Asking questions so that you research the customer so you know how to serve their needs, how to solve their problems. Once they know you can solve their problems, money is no object. Anything is too cheap. But I don't see even our own salespeople do that. Our salespeople just want to tell people how big their dick is. You fucking idiot. You know what? You tell people how big your dick is, and then they find out it's this big. Fucking idiot. So what you want to do is you want to understand their problems. You want to solve their problems. When you do that, you close the deal. Deals are not closed by giving people discount, by giving people like gimmick. Oh, let's play a game. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, you win something, motherfucker. You never sell anything that way. But people don't buy because of that. People buy because they have a problem and you can solve it. Once they understand that, they will pay any money for it. I've been doing sales last 30 years in software. I closed million dollar deals, two million dollar deals. I don't want to tell you how big my deals are because it will fucking make you shit your pants. Do I go in there and say, my, I, my, my company is the best. Oh yeah, you know what? You know, my company is no more than five people in Canada. Like I'm competing with IBM, HP, Dell, all those guys. My company is this big. So I'm not gonna go in there and say, my company is the best. So what I do is I go in there and I ask them, what is your problem? What kind of problem are you trying to solve? They tell me their problems. We need to build a system that can measure all the testing results. So this is actually for a company called Ballard Power Systems. They build hydrogen cars, okay? Uh, this was like 20 years ago. They, they were bought out by Mercedes. And I tell them, well, okay, that's great. Uh, but if we do it like this, if you do it like that, this is going to save you money and you don't need that many people to manage it. And they go, wow, you're so right. And then they say, yeah, okay, I agree. Oh, yeah, I agree. You, you have solved our problem. Where do I sign a contract? But you know, Tom, we are a big company. We must go through a public bidding process. We cannot just give you the contract. There must be like five companies bidding for it. But I'm, let me tell you, you're going to get it. Okay, so we bid and I won. That's how public tenders work. They already decided who's going to win. And they will give the contract to the person that can solve their problems. It's so simple. And the IBMs, the HPs and Dells are wondering, what the fuck? Who is this company, Media Step? Why are they stealing all our clients? Because I go in there, I, I find out what their problem is and I solve them for them. I don't charge them any money. I give them consultation. I give them ideas and they, they love it. They know we can do it and they say, okay. It's not because of discount. It's not because of gimmicks. It's because they know we can solve their problems. You gotta go in there, understand their pain point. So again, summarize. One, you only sell to people that need your product or services. Don't waste your time. And two, ask a lot of questions. Understand the customer, you understand their pain point, you understand their problems, and then you tell them why your product, your services is the best solution for their problem. And then you're done, you got the deal. So simple. That is what professional salespeople do. And frankly, I don't see any of them in Vietnam. Motherfucker. Take some fucking action. Don't be a fucked up.